this countdown, we have the Kosu Artifact. In 1963, three rock hunters were exploring the mountains of Eastern California with hopes to find geodes to sell at their gift shop. They gathered a bunch of them and took them home where they proceeded to cut them in half. However, one of the geodes practically broke their new crystal saw in half when trying to cut it open. Instead of finding crystals, they actually discovered something more intriguing. Inside the rock mass was a perfectly circular porcelain-like section. In the center of the section was a tiny magnetic pin. An x-ray of the rock revealed that there was also a spring or helix at one of the ends. From there, people realized that it resembles a modern-day spark plug. However, it is theorized that this rock is around 500,000 years old. But spark plugs were not invented until the 19th century. So this has left people thinking that it's proof of alien visitors saying that it came from their spacecraft. Meaning, they're way more clever than we realized since they created this technology thousands of years before we did. Others believe that it was left behind by time travelers. Then you have the skeptics that have tried to debunk it by saying it simply was just a spark plug from the 1920s and then someone threw it out so it's just a piece of someone's trash that we're all hyping up. But honestly, you choose what you want to believe. In our ninth spot we have the Roswell Rock. The Roswell Rock, as featured in a couple of episodes of the show Ancient Aliens, is a very weird rock with a detailed design. The rock is uniform in color, unusually smooth, and has a design protruding from the surface of it. This rock was found in Roswell, New Mexico in 2004. A man named Robert Ridge, a deer hunter, apparently found this rock half sticking out of the ground. He also discovered that it had strange magnetic properties. Upon analyzing it, people have realized that the rock's design exactly matches a crop circle that was found in England in 1996. Some people believe that it's just a man-made copy of the crop circles. Other people believe that it conveys some sort of message from aliens. After experts have analyzed the design, they notice that it's a pattern of a sun and a moon inside a circle. Linda Moulton Howe, an investigative journalist, believes that the sun, moon, and skies are present throughout the solar system and all the galaxies, meaning maybe aliens are trying to teach us about astronomy. Or the rock contains some sort of date for some event that has happened or will happen. Making our way down the list to number 8, we have the ancient airplane. Researchers have noticed that the Incas left behind some very interesting objects. One of the more notable ones are the figures that are small and golden that closely resemble modern jet planes. Upon analyzing them, people have noticed that the figures have what appears to be wings, a stabilizing tail, and landing gears. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that they are a figure of planes. But we know that planes were not created back then. This has led people to believe that they indeed were in contact with extraterrestrials that had advanced technology. Whereas others think they're supposed to represent flying creatures like bees or fish. But again, it's for you to decide. Coming in at number 7, we have the alien head. Okay, this one, I can't lie, it's pretty weird. In 2017, a man in Cusco came forward with an artifact that he claims he found in the southern desert of Peru. This artifact appears to be a mummified life form, eerily resembling an alien. An x-ray concluded that the skull had angled eyelids with shallow eye sockets, two nostrils, and a narrow slit type mouth. Under the skull you can see exposed bone. Now the skull is covered in a type of clay that gives the skull a more alien type appearance. But it is discovered that it is a real skull. But it isn't concluded that if it's an alien skull or if it's just an animal skull that has been preserved and then morphed in appearance because of the clay coating. But what's weird is apparently there have been tons of skulls discovered in Peru. Lots of them have elongated skulls, which aliens are said to have. Maybe it's evidence that alien species were once inhabitants there. In our sixth spot, we have the alien hands. In our sixth spot, we have the alien hands. Okay, this is where it gets even weirder. In the same area where the skull was found, they found a hand with only three elongated fingers. It has nothing to do with the previously mentioned skull, though. The skull is tiny, whereas the hand is larger than a human hand. So this hand type thing is said to be made of bone type material and some kind of skin. Just like the skull, the hand is also coated with clay. X-rays of this hand show that each finger has six bones. Human hands only have three. 
Each of the fingers also contains something that is thought to be a fingernail, but we don't know exactly what creature this hand is from. Some think that it's from an animal, others are convinced that it indeed is an alien hand. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Gosford Glyphs. The Gosford Glyphs refer to the rock carvings that seem to resemble ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics that were found in New South Wales. In Brisbane Water National Park, there is a site that contains two eight-foot-high walls that contain over 300 carvings. It is said that these glyphs are about 4,600 years old. Experts have ended up decoding the glyphs and say that in one section, it talks about two brothers coming here from Egypt. They got shipwrecked on this land and one got bitten by a snake and passed away. But the most striking carving is one that looks like an alien spaceship. It has a classic UFO shape with rays shooting down. Egyptologists are confused by this carving as it doesn't fit in with all the other ones, but they believe that it had to be significant in order for them to carve it. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that these markings show that people have been in contact with aliens before. In our fourth spot, we have the UFO tooth wheel. A Russian man was using coal to heat his home when he realized something odd sticking out of one of the pieces of coal. Researchers stated that it looked like a toothed wheel. Testing of this object revealed that it was 98% aluminum and 2% magnesium. What's weird is humans didn't learn to make aluminum until 1825, but this coal piece is 300 million years old, and the tooth object appears to be artificially made. This object resembles parts that are used in things like microscopes or electronic devices. So who created this object and what was it originally used for? Scientists are still conducting tests on the object with hopes of uncovering the answers to those questions. In our third spot, we have the Betts Mystery Sphere. On March 27, 1974, the Betts family were out examining a small brush fire near their property. While doing so, the family came across a completely smooth metal sphere about the size of a bowling ball. On the sphere, there was a triangle engraved on it. They took it home only to find out that it had very strange properties. One day when the Bet's son was playing his guitar in the same room as the sphere, the sphere started to emit a throbbing sound from it. The sound was strong enough to hurt the family's dog's ears. This sphere could also change direction, so if you pushed it or rolled it across the floor, it could roll forward, stop, and then roll right back to you. It was also said to be able to absorb power from solar energy, as it would be more active when exposed to the sun. The sphere would also sometimes emit vibrations as if something was operating on the inside of it. Now, they refused to let anyone analyze it until they linked the sphere to paranormal activity that started happening around their house. Like doors would slam or they would hear organ music around the house. So then they let scientists analyze it and said that it was just a normal sphere but the family is convinced that something is controlling it. Maybe something of the extraterrestrial nature. Moving on at number two, we have the Brass Bell. In 1944, a 10-year-old boy by the name of Newton Anderson was shoveling coal into his furnace at his home. That's when a piece of coal was dropped and broke in half. Inside the coal revealed a mysterious bell. The coal that he was using was said to be about 300 million years old. Back then, the dominant life form on Earth was insects, so how could it have been manufactured back then? Also, the bell contained an unusual mixture of metals including copper, zinc, tin, arsenic, iodide, and selenium. Not a typical combination used to make objects. Now, a man named Boris Billis ended up taking the bell to the geology department at the University of Delaware. From there, they conducted studies and discovered that the bell was handmade. Now, of course, people were skeptical, thinking that the boy lied and didn't find the bell in coal. But in 2007, he underwent a polygraph test conducted by a specialist who worked on death row cases. It was discovered that he was indeed telling the truth. His report is even posted online for others to see. So people again have linked this strange object to aliens. And in our number one spot, we have the Wedge of Ayud. In 1974, construction workers in Romania were working in a village in Ayud. They were working near a river when they found a collection of strange objects buried 30 feet in the sand. Two of the objects were bones from mastodons, which are very distant relatives of the elephant. Beside the bones laid a mysterious wedge-shaped object. This object contained 89% aluminum, 6% copper, and a total of 12 elements altogether. 
Like I mentioned previously, aluminum wasn't discovered until around 1825. Yet this wedge lay next to bones that are from around 11,000 years ago. The wedge itself is theorized to be around 10,000 years old. People believe that this object just couldn't have existed back then. An aeronautical engineer stated that this object looks exactly like a piece of a landing gear for landing aircraft. This has left researchers to believe that extraterrestrials crashed here around 11,000 years ago. And this piece is part of their spacecraft. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Dragonfly 44. This is what is called an ultra diffuse galaxy, and it is located in the Comma Cluster. This galaxy is of concern because of some interesting observations that were made in relation to it back in 2016. Basically, this galaxy was first discovered because of the influence it is having on our Milky Way galaxy. Astronomers noticed some strange sort of ripples in our galaxy and subsequently realized that this was due to the pull of Dragonfly 44's gravity as it orbited around. Around our own. Of course, once it was realized that this galaxy was the culprit, experts started looking into the galaxy more, and that is when it was realized that this galaxy is actually quite dark. In fact, we can only really see this galaxy due to four bright stars that shine out of the otherwise dark, gloomy galaxy. This has led to the hypothesis that this galaxy must be largely made of dark matter. This is extremely interesting because not only is dark matter one of the most pressing mysteries of space, but this galaxy was found to be made up of 99 0.99% dark matter. Some even say that this galaxy shouldn't even really be able to hold itself together with so few stars. This is all to say that this galaxy is extremely interesting, and with further investigation and research, it may just be the key that helps us understand what in the world dark matter really is, and what it's made of. In our number 9 spot today, we have cosmic disappearance. Some sort of unidentified thing that is larger than anything in our known universe is sucking portions of the Milky Way away. I know. It's terrifying, and it definitely is concerning, considering it's the place that we all call home. This discovery came in 2009 when researchers first found a cluster of galaxies moving at extremely fast speed towards a small area of sky. This area is located between the constellations of Centaurus and Vela, and whatever this whole thing is, it has experts completely stumped as to what it could be. For now, it remains a space mystery that has been dubbed Dark Flow so that it can sit on the shelf with the other terrifying space mysteries like dark energy and dark matter, whatever those are. In our number 8 spot today, we have Tycho. This is what is being called a zombie star. This frightening name comes from the fact that this star was once a white dwarf, which is basically what is left over after a star exploded, but its mass was not enough to become a neutron star or a black hole. What's different about these zombie stars, however, is that they have gobbled up a bunch of mass from another nearby star, which then leads to them exploding all over again in what is called a type 1 a supernova. These blasts are insanely luminous and bright. Some even say that they have the light of one billion suns. This is all to say that they are insanely interesting objects and events that exist in the universe, and they are also thought to be helping scientists study what the heck dark energy is. In our number 7 spot today, we have Oumuamua. A few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system, and they called it Oumuamua, and it was widely agreed that it was an interstellar comet that had swung out from around another star. Upon closer examination, however, they realized that something was propelling it and causing it to accelerate. And this is when the debate started, because they just don't really know why. Evie Loeb, who's a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail, which is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that accelerates by being pushed by solar radiation. Other scientists didn't agree with this and instead said that it's possible that hydrogen ice could have melted off of the object in a way that would mimic a rocket engine or something of that nature. Avi then wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before it reached our solar system. I guess all in all we just have to wait it out while the scientists debate and gather more evidence to really know what is going on behind this one. In our number 6 spot today we have the wandering moon. The moon is apparently, slowly, sadly, moving away from Earth. When I say slowly, I mean slowly as it's at a rate of about half an inch a year, but still 
when we're talking about our cosmic best buddy, the moon isn't only the thing that lights up our night sky. The moon plays a vital role to our lives here on Earth due to its great companionship and its gravitational pull. The moon's gravity is what causes the tides of our ocean, so without our moon, who knows what would happen to our marine ecosystems. The moon is also responsible for the axial tilt of Earth and how it stays in relatively the same place. Without the moon, we either wouldn't have any tilt at all, or we would be tilted all the way. This would mean that we would either have no seasons, or some of the most extreme seasons any of us have ever seen. While it doesn't appear the moon is going anywhere soon, sometimes we just have to keep an eye on her to make sure. In our number 5 spot today, we have the mysterious gap. Basically, a new analysis by scientists at MIT of ancient meteorites found something new and super interesting. In the early solar system, there was what is referred to as a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas that rotated around the sun, and eventually it coalesced into the planets that we know and love today. So this new study and analysis suggests that this sort of mysterious gap existed within this disk somewhere around, I don't know, 4.567 billion years ago, and it was in an area near where the asteroid belt is today. The reason this gap is mysterious is because it isn't quite clear what the cause of this gap was. There are a few possibilities, including Jupiter, during the time when it began to take its shape, because of its extremely large gravitational pull, it could have pushed gas and dust towards the outskirts, which then would leave a gap in the developing disk. There are other possibilities, but regardless of whatever caused this gap, it is said to have likely served as a cosmic boundary that kept material on either side from interacting with each other. In our number 4 spot today, we have a blitzar. So normally, when stellar black holes are formed, they are the result of a large star exploding into a supernova. This then has the core normally collapsing into either a neutron star or a black hole. Blitzers are a hypothetical type of neutron star where they spin so fast that if they slow down, they'll collapse right into a black hole. I do understand that they are theoretical at this point, but some researchers believe that these stars might be an explanation for fast radio bursts should we find that they in fact do exist. In January of 2015, there were seven different events that experts thought could be attributed to blitzars, but it is thought that they actually might occur once every 10 seconds in our observable universe. The the magnetic field around a blitzar would clear anything prior to it turning into a black hole, which means that no nearby material would fall in upon the initial collapse, which means that there is no burst of gamma rays or x-rays, which is usually seen when other black holes form, and this is exactly why, if they do exist, they are hard to detect. Should we come to find concrete evidence of their existence, these guys would prove incredibly valuable insight into the formation of black holes. In our number 3 spot today, we have Hoag's object. Okay, so there are different shapes to galaxies. That's not the weirdest thing in the world. You know we live in a spiral shaped one, it's beautiful, there are other galaxies called ellipticals that are more like oval shaped, but one galaxy in particular, which is now called Hoag's object, is truly like none we've ever seen. This galaxy has a yellow core, and this core is surrounded by an outer ring of blue stars that are much younger than the core, but in the middle between the two, there's just nothing, and researchers are completely stumped as to how this could have formed. The galaxy was first discovered in the 1950s, and since then, there is one leading theory as to how it could have been formed, but it still isn't concrete. Basically, this leading theory suggests that perhaps a small galaxy sped through a larger disk-shaped galaxy, which then created this bizarre situation, but the problem with this theory is that there are no signs of any nearby galaxies that could have served as this sort of bullet in this scenario. If that happened, it also would have sped up the core of Hoag's object, but we can observe it as moving quite slowly, so that also rules out this theory. There have been other galaxies discovered that have some similar characteristics to this one, but none share all of the qualities seen in this very bizarre galaxy. In our number 2 spot today, we have Haumea. Back in 2017, this dwarf planet passed between Earth and a distant star, which allowed scientists to get a better look at it, and thus they were able to discover some new findings. Haumea sits in an area beyond Neptune that is called the Cooper Belt, and it is actually one of the largest objects inside of the belt. Before the new discoveries in 2017, we already knew that this dwarf planet was weird. I mean, it has kind of a weird elongated shape, it has two moons, and its day only lasts four hours, which means that it's the fastest spinning large object in our entire solar system. It is thought that its fast spin might be responsible for its weird shape, but either way, scientists were quite surprised in 2017 when they realized that this strange planet actually has rings. This means that Haumea likely had some sort of collision, and probably not too long ago, relatively speaking. This collision likely happened somewhere 
from 1 billion to several hundred million years ago, but the search for the origins of these rings brings a whole new mystery to the dwarf planet. In our number one spot today, we have magnetars. These space things are actually a type of neutron star, but what makes them different is that they have this insanely powerful magnetic field. Like we are talking 1,000 times stronger than a regular neutron star, or about a trillion times stronger than the magnetic field that Earth has. That means that these type of stars would have enough magnetic power to wipe every credit card on Earth, even from a distance halfway to the moon. They're the most magnetic stars in the entire universe. This is all very cool and interesting, but it's also important to note that if you were to venture within about 600 miles or a thousand kilometers of one of these stars, you would die very quickly. The magnetic field would destroy your body. It would tear electrons from your atoms, which would then basically turn you into a cloud of monotonic ions or single atoms without electrons. This is all to say that next to black holes, these are one of the most bizarre objects in the entire universe. Number 10, Uluru Rock. I'll be honest, I'm a rock guy. I go on vacation, I'm goggles up the entire time. I love looking for geology and history. It's hard not to want to bring something home every trip, right? But depending where you are, you can be in a lot of trouble for doing so. In the Northern Territory of Australia, for example, there is a beautiful monumental sandstone formation. It's known as Ayers Rock or Uluru Rock. Now this site is sacred for the Aboriginal people of the land. They respectfully ask that no visitors take any piece of the sandstone home with them. Yet of course, some of us can't follow simple instructions and in numerous cases, bad luck has followed them home as well. Breakups, death of a loved one, you name it, it's all bad. Why risk it? Just leave things alone, you know? Number nine. Robert the Evil Doll. A man named Rob Otto, he was given a doll that looked a lot like him. One of his servants who didn't like him made him this doll. This was clearly a voodoo doll, right? Obviously, this is an obvious trap. Neighbors would then hear Robert talking to this doll. Robert and Robert the podcast, I guess. I don't know, tune in. Now, after Robert's untimely death, the new owners of the house found that same doll. They found it in the attic, still there. That family was haunted afterwards by the same doll. They would hear threats coming from it at night, so now now the doll is on display at a museum in Key West. No more threats, just glass cage forever. Number eight. Elmo. The Sesame Street icon has been in homes for many, many years. There was a literal stampede when Tickle Me Elmo was released. An employee was sadly trampled, got his ribs broken, it was horrible. People go crazy for these things. When the Elmo Knows Your Name toy was launched by Fisher Price back in 2005, there were 15,000 names ready to go. Only one family was traumatized. Only one. That's not bad, all things considered. That Elmo toy apparently spoke on its own, threatening to harm the family often, so they tossed it out immediately. This happened more than once though. The audio sounded off for some devices and some homes. Be like Elmo sounded like beat up Elmo. The Elmo phone was also released in 2009 and it often said 456, but in some cases it sounded like who wants to have very different things, those two. Those are two different phrases. Those are not the same at all. We're all learning things with Elmo, whether you like it or not. Number seven, Belcourt Castle Chairs. This one's like the opposite of musical chairs. These chairs are no fun at all. This Rhode Island ballroom is beautiful. It's a cottage mansion, a lot of wood, a lot of history. It smells great, I bet. I would have bet that there would be a ghost woman in the ballroom. Turns out it's actually a handful of chairs. Who knew? That was my second guess, handful of chairs. That's good. Visitors have reported an eerie feeling when standing close to these chairs. They get the chills, they get the sense of energy almost. Now, things certainly go a step further. Some guests have seen the chair move on their own, or they've had the chairs push against them, all of course by some invisible force. I'm not sure if I believe in ghosts personally, but if I saw a chair moving, yeah, that would do it. Just one of those would definitely flip my beliefs for sure. Haunted furniture? That, that gets me, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. Number six, the haunted skull. I'm pretty sure every skull is haunted, no? But I don't know. This one specifically, ooh, this one's real haunted though, here we go. Located in the Burton Agnes Hall over in England, the Screaming Skull sits quite still, but its curse is very real and very active. The Screaming Skull once belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith, who died in 1620. Now reports of strange figures or shadows around the skull, that's one thing, but many people believe they can still hear the screams of one Catherine Ann Griffith to this day. Number five. The Unlucky Mummy. Right off the bat, the Unlucky Mummy isn't an actual mummy per se. It's rather the lid of a coffin that once belonged to a high status woman who lived sometime around 950 BCE. So a little old, a little, little time ago. The mummy board wasn't seen again until the early 
1800s AD. It was found in Thebes. Four Englishmen found it, and of course, they were celebrating this ancient piece of history, but it didn't take long for all four of those men to pass away from mysterious circumstances. If you're looking for more top 10s on ancient history, come meet me over on our top 10 history channel. It's called Bumblebee. We do top 10s only on historical stuff. Ancient eras, mummies, silly Victorian era hats, cool shoes, I don't know, you name it. It's all over at Bumblebee. See you there. Number four. Mandy the Haunted Doll. Mandy lives in the Quesnel Museum in Canada. Awesome, nice and close to home. The staff of the museum insist that Mandy is kept in a separate display case all by herself because when she's with other dolls, she would end up knocking them over somehow, some way. Staff also reported that their lunches would disappear and that photos of the doll would end up glitching out. The lunches disappearing, that's for sure one dude who's blaming ghosts. That's actually not a bad plan. I kinda, I'm okay with that. But the photos, that's terrifying. That's a surefire sign that it's haunted. Number three. The Great Bed of Ware. We figured we'd get nice and cozy for this next one. For starters, it's massive and it's cozy. It looks like the bed a king would certainly sleep in, and rightfully so. The Great Bed of Ware was built for the royal family back in 1463. It was 12 feet by 12 feet. Jonas Fosbrook, a carpenter from that time, they impressed King Edward IV so much with their work that the king gave them a pension for the rest of their life. People would travel all across the land to see this bed. That's a fun family vacation. Yeah, we're gonna go see a bed. Yeah, Disneyland's closed today. Let's go see this bed. Shakespeare mentioned this bed in his play, The Twelfth Night, okay? This is a big deal. All those who stayed in the bed, though, they did not have a good night's rest. No, instead they woke up to scratches and bruises, or they would wake up just on the floor. Yeah, somehow they would roll out of a 12-foot bed. Today it can be found in the Victoria and Albert Museum, in case you want to go in there and take a nap. Would you stay the night in this old, haunted, dirty, and probably very uncomfortable bed? Sound off below. I definitely wouldn't. Number two. The Baker's Wedding Dress. Back in 1849, in the small town of Altoona, Pennsylvania, Elias Baker and his wife, Hetty, lived in the Baker Mansion. They had two sons and one daughter named Anna Baker. Anna had fallen in love with one of her father's employees. Nice. Another steel worker, but her father wouldn't allow the relationship to take off. So Anna vowed to never marry again, ever. She locked herself in her room for the time being. And when her father passed away in 1848, she went to find her true love again, but he had since moved on and settled down. Yeah, worst case Scenario. So she spent the rest of her days behaving erratically and her soul apparently still haunts that same wedding dress today. Not just the dress, also the mansion is apparently haunted as well. Guests would report furniture moving around. What's with ghosts and moving furniture? Where were these guys when I was moving? And finally, number one, the Bassano vase. This vase comes from the 15th century. It made for an excellent wedding gift, of course, in Italy one day, but the night before the big day, bride sadly lost her life with the vase still in her possession. So the family kept it afterwards, of course, but as the vase was passed down the family line, a pattern began to unveil itself. It was kind of hard to ignore. Whomever held possession of the Bazzano vase died shortly after in some way, shape, or form. Now keep in mind, this was the 15th century, so the average lifespan was 30 to 40 years old on a good day. But after many deaths in the family, it was packed away for good, just to be safe, or so they thought. The vase showed up again in 1988 alongside a note. The note was pretty to the point. It said, beware this vase brings death. End of note. Pretty simple, I like it. Whoever found it was probably like, huh, okay, and then continued on with it. And then it was auctioned for over $2,000 sans note. Weird, they left the note out of that, that's odd. The pharmacist who won the auction, well, you guessed it, passed away within months. Starting off this countdown, we have the psychiatric patient. Over at the Glor Psychiatric Museum in St. Joseph, Missouri is a display of a bunch of weird random objects. You wouldn't think anything of them until you read the caption. These objects were all found inside of a woman's stomach. Yes, this woman suffered from pica. Pica is a condition that causes individuals to crave and eat unusual non-food items. These items may include paper, wood, feces, paint, dirt, and rocks. It is thought that those with pica have an iron or zinc deficiency. There were 1,446 items taken from this woman's stomach, and all of them are on display. These objects include buttons, safety pins, nails, and sewing needles. In our ninth spot, we have the tapeworm. At the Magiro Parasitological Museum in Tokyo, Japan, you will find the world's largest tapeworm. This tapeworm is about 28.8 feet long, and scary enough, it was extracted from a man's intestinal tract. He got the tapeworm after eating trout sushi. So if you get a tapeworm, it attaches to the inner walls of your intestines where it feeds off the food being digested. Just 
look at the size of this thing that was inside someone's body that is gross it said that this tapeworm started off small and then eventually grew that big inside of him <sighs> so if you have a strong enough stomach then you can view this insect along with 45,000 other real life parasites at this museum coming in our eighth spot we have the jar head if you visit the Museum of Criminal Anthropology in Turin, then you will have the chance to see a perfectly preserved head in a jar. This belongs to the man named Cesar Lombroso, also referred to as the father of criminology. Cesar was an Italian medical criminologist, university professor, and a physician. He conducted numerous studies on criminals to try and figure out why some people commit crimes and other people don't. Well. After he died, his head was sent to his colleagues so that his brain could be studied. In fact, that's what he requested in his will. Afterwards, his head was sent to be preserved and put on display in that museum. But seriously, can you imagine that, like, <clears throat> in his will? Like, to my friend Laura, I give you my house, and my dear friend Jimmy, my brain. Enjoy. Mm. Moving on to number seven, we have the Mer Monkey. To combat boredom and isolation, a UK museum went to Twitter and asked museums to share a creepy piece from their exhibits. That's when the National Museums of Scotland responded, attaching a photo of what they call Scotland's original mermaid. Basically, it's an object that was purposely made to look quite odd. It features a taxidermy monkey with the lower half of a fish sewn onto its torso. But the monkey is shown to be completely hairless, making it that much more terrifying. On top of that, its teeth are rotting, and some have been even replaced with fish teeth. It's a very, very creepy design. Like, who came up with this thing? And let's hope that it's fake and not an actual creature. In our sixth spot, we have the Executioner. So, I don't know what's more terrifying, being executed or encountering an Executioner wearing this terrifying looking mask. So this mask was said to have been worn by executioners in the 19th century. It is made out of three iron plates and features two circular eye holes and the worst part, a terrifying lopsided grin. It honestly looks like they try to make it look friendly, but then it just went terribly wrong. Now others have theorized that it wasn't an executioner's mask, but instead it's a school's bridal. Basically, women were forced to wear this as a form of punishment for behaving immodest or rude. It's meant to inflict pain on the person while simultaneously causing public humiliation. Either way, it's terrifying and I would never want to encounter anyone wearing it. But if you want to see this mask along with an axe and a guillotine block, it's located in the Tower of London. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the creeping baby. If you're easily terrified with dolls, then maybe just look away for a second. So this doll was created in 1871 by a man named George P. Clark. It's currently on display in the Smithsonian Museum. He wanted to make a doll that imitates human life. In this case, he wanted the doll to crawl exactly how a baby does. So the doll's head, arms, and legs were made out of painted plaster. From there, they were hinged onto a brass clockwork body. The doll then moves forward by rolling along on two toothed wheels. But honestly, it just looks like a scary robot baby. So not only is this doll terrifying to look at, but it can slowly creep along like a baby. Yeah, no thanks. All I need is waking up in the middle of the night to that doll crawling along my floor. Coming in at number four, we have the human doll. This next doll was ranked the creepiest doll in all of Minnesota. And I can see why. It is said to be 169 years old, and it is made with real human hair. It was handmade and painted with a facial tone color. However, over the years, the doll's facial features have deteriorated. Now the doll has gray, cracked, peeling skin and black holes for eyes. It honestly looks like a mummified child. On top of that, it has lost one arm, making it that much more terrifying. Currently, it is stored at the History Center of Olmsted County in Rochester, Minnesota. And at number three, we have Annabelle. On display in the Warren's Oculet Museum in Monroe, Connecticut is the real-life Annabelle doll that is possessed by a spirit of a girl named Annabelle Higgins. This museum is owned by the demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren. Their real-life stories are shared in movies such as The Conjuring. Now, this doll doesn't quite look as terrifying as the one featured in the movie Annabelle, but it's just as deadly. The doll, in fact, is a Raggedy Ann doll. In the museum, Annabelle is contained in a glass case labeled warning, positively, do not touch. On top of that, there is a tarot devil card stuck at the front of the case. Now, 
let's say you decide to go on a trip and visit this museum and then you accidentally touch the case. What would happen? Well, decades ago, a visitor ignored the warnings and banged on the case. Shortly after, he died in a motorcycle crash. On top of that, a priest came and visited the doll and then threw the doll across the room. Upon leaving the museum, he got in a serious accident with a tractor trailer. So I wouldn't dare mess with this doll. This doll was given to a woman named Donna in 1970 as a gift. Ed and Lorraine Warren were called to investigate when the spirit would harm her and even tried to own her soul. In our second spot, we have the spliced head. All right, don't lose your heads over this next one. But the head of the killer, Peter Curtin, is on display in the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Wisconsin Dells. Peter Curtin, also known as the Dusseldorf Vampire, was beheaded in 1931 for his numerous killings and crimes. Criminologists had his head bisected to conduct studies on it. They believed that his brain would be quite abnormal due to his dark tendencies and disturbing behaviors. But it wasn't. Now his split open and mummified head is on display in Wisconsin where it hangs from a hook and then just spins slowly. The room where his head is on display is only accessible through a secret passageway. Now what's truly creepy are Peter's last words. Apparently, before being beheaded, he said, and I quote, Tell me, after my head is chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. Okay, that alone is super creepy. And in another one spot, we have the conjuring mirror. This mirror is also on display in the Warren's Oculate Museum. This mirror is a dangerous object that was used in rituals to summon spirits. However, you can't control what spirits respond, so as a result, you could conjure good or evil spirits. The mirror was given to Ed and Lorraine by a 55-year-old man named Steven Zellner. He was using this mirror to practice a ritual called mirror magic. After doing this ritual for months, it gave Steven the ability to see into the future. But then he also started to use this mirror to get revenge on people that he didn't like. He would stand in front of the mirror, stare into it, and envision something bad happening to them. It would indeed then come true. The evil spirits would make sure of it. But then that's when things started to go wrong. He didn't follow through with all of the ritual's requirements, and so the spirits started making bad things happen to him. His helm became infested with spirits. They would slam doors, break his dishes, and try to harm him. When Ed and Lorraine Warren took the mirror to store it safely, they almost got into numerous car accidents while transporting it. So this mirror is quite deadly and another thing you should never mess with. Starting off this countdown, we have the pregnant cat. Now, if you are a big cat lover, maybe this museum isn't for you. In the Grant Museum of Zoology, you'll be able to find a variety of cool artifacts from a jar of moles, like the animals, not the skin moles, a jar of brains, and even a pregnant cat that has been cut in half. In the museum, there is a perfectly preserved cat in fluid that is sliced open. The cat only has its two limbs, and you can clearly see its internal organs. According to the museum, this is the object that disturbs the visitors the most. Moving on to number nine, we have the wax heads. To combat boredom and isolation, a UK museum went to Twitter and asked museums to share a creepy piece from their exhibits. The the Platt Hall Museum responded with this entry. At the Platt Hall Museum in Manchester, England, they have creepy wax heads on display. What makes it worse is that these wax heads are made from real human hair and teeth. Because they're old, their skin is peeling, which then makes them look that much more terrifying. They all just have this creepy grin like they're up to no good. And apparently this museum is filled with other creepy dolls, but these ones are ranked the creepiest and I understand why. In our eighth spot, we have Ruby. Ruby is a very old doll who is suspected to cause illness to its owners. Being over 80 years old, it was first given to a family whose child then passed away from tuberculosis. The family believes that their daughter's spirit attached the doll after her death. Apparently, Ruby is believed to have caused sickness for generations. Ruby was given to the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult, where it's still on display. Coming in at number seven, we have the feet. The modern the museum in Philadelphia is filled with odd and disturbing artifacts. One artifact that grosses out a lot of visitors 
is a jar containing amputated feet. These were the feet from a 45 year old man that suffered from type 2 diabetes. They were collected in 2012 by the donor who was still alive. They are perfectly preserved in a jar containing ethyl alcohol. So according to the museum, the donor had type 2 diabetes. It ended up damaging the nerves in his feet and arteries in his legs. This led to injuries and sores that didn't heal and as a result he had to get his feet amputated. They're uh, pretty gross looking, especially since the skin is just peeling off the toes. Ugh. In our sixth spot, we have the foot binding. The practice of foot binding was very common in Tang Dynasty China. Those who got their feet bound were considered more beautiful, and it communicated wealth and a higher status. So basically, they would have their toes broken and folded under their feet, and then their feet were bound so that they appeared tinier. Well, an actual foot from a woman who had her feet bound is on display in the Mutter Museum. This woman's feet broke right off due to the binding and then frostbite. When this happened, the patient had her feet preserved in lime and wanted to have them put on again. When she was told they couldn't be reattached, she gave one foot to her doctor and the other to an officer. From there, the doctor donated the foot to this museum where it remains on display. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the head. Alright guys, don't lose your head over this next one. But the head of the French serial killer Henry Desiree Landru is on display at Hollywood's Museum of Death. Between 1915 to 1919, Landru killed seven women. Later on, he killed four other individuals. Apparently, he would use Lonely Hearts ads to lure widows to his house, then he would chop them up and burn their bodies in his oven. As a result of his crimes, he was executed by the guillotine in 1922. From then, his head was saved and is now on display and it looks pretty terrifying. In our fourth spot we have the crone. The crone is a supposed haunted wooden figure on display at the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult. The figure is of a person with nails in its eyes and a noose around its neck. Two hikers found this artifact in a cave in the Catskill Mountains. They took it home and apparently weird paranormal activity occurred. Objects would move around in their home, faucets would turn on by themselves, and they would find unexplained wet footprints around their home. First off, you kind of had it coming if you thought it was a good idea to bring that creepy object home with you. They gave this artifact to the museum after seeing an apparition of an old naked woman in their living room. But even at the museum, the paranormal activity won't stop. The owners, Dana and Greg, claim that they too witnessed the wet footprints and sometimes the museum's lights flicker on and off. Furthermore, two men that mocked the figure almost died that night after skidding out of control into oncoming traffic. Now the figure is locked away and no longer on display. In our third spot, we have the plague mask. This creepy looking mask is what people would wear back in the day during the plague. Back then, doctors and citizens had no clue how the plague was spread. They thought maybe it was from contaminated water or from foul air. As a result, they would wear this protective mask. The face is covered by a cotton velvet mask and the wearer breathed through the beak, which contained herbs or sponges soaked in vinegar. It was thought that this would filter out the bad air. Then there were glass lenses that covered the eye in case the illness spread by eye contact. Like, can you imagine that? Just looking at someone in the eyes and then getting sick? That would be terrible. There was also a cloak-like leather piece to wear with the mask to cover the entire body. But can you guys imagine if we had to wear that right now? Like, that would suck. Plus, these things look terrifying. Moving on to number two, we have the Museum of Mummies. For those of you who have watched the movie Night at the Museum, what's one museum you would love to spend the night in? Keep in mind, all the exhibits would come to life just like in the movie. Let me know in the comments below. I don't know what museum I would choose, but I know which one I wouldn't choose. El Museo de las Momias, aka the Museum of Mummies, is a museum in Mexico that contains over 100 mummified bodies. Now, how did they get so many? Well, from 1865 to 1958, a town in Mexico made relatives pay a grave tax. If you couldn't pay it for three years in a row, then your loved ones were dug up and evicted from their spots. They would then move these bodies to a spot underneath the cemetery. They eventually dug up so many bodies that they just formed a museum. What's disturbing is that some of the mummies have creepy, distorted, twisted faces. But because of the dry soil conditions, they were all well preserved. Creepy, but well preserved. And in our number one spot, we have the human colon. I swear, the Mutter Museum is home to the creepiest artifact, including a nine foot long, human colon. This human colon belonged to a 29 year old man and circus performer known as the human balloon. When he passed away, doctors discovered that his colon was 28 inches at its widest point, 9 feet long, 
and contained about 40 pounds of feces. How did this happen? Well, apparently this man suffered from chronic constipation. He could go up to months without having to go to the bathroom, and that's why I have a bowl of raisin bran a day. As he got older, his condition got worse, and now his colon is an artifact. Starting off this countdown, we have the chariot. A really cool artifact found in King Tut's tomb was his chariot. The chariot was found dismantled, but they ended up reconstructing it for display. Okay, first off, how did they build that ancient thing without any blueprints? That's talent right there, because I struggle building IKEA furniture even with blueprints. Now, what makes this artifact significant is that it's theorized that the chariot might have been King Tut's cause of death. King Tut was found with a fractured lower leg, shattered pelvis, and ribs. A new analysis shows that he was crushed on one side of his body likely while on his knees. So some believe that he fell from his chariot in a horrific accident and died. If this is the case, then that thing is most certainly cursed. Moving on at number nine, we have the meat mummy container. So apparently mummies get hungry on the way to the afterlife. As a result, they are often buried with food. The food is carefully preserved so that they can last a long time for their lengthy journey. This is done by preparing the meat for eating, then wrapping the meat in linen. So they basically mummify the meat. In King Tut's tomb, they found 48 containers of meat mummies. Guess King Tut is a big eater. Good thing that we took away his source of food from him. Like, come on guys, you're making the curse worse than it is. This dude's gonna be mad. I mean, I would be if people took away food from me. We all know how sacred food is. In our eighth spot, we have the toe and finger caps. This is one of the more odd items found in King Tut's tomb. So King Tut was found with gold toe caps on his feet and fingers. That's right just little golden covers for each individual toe and finger. These were placed on the divine after death so that their toes and fingers keep their shape. These were placed onto his body during mummification. It's also thought to protect the dead from magical dangers. Now, I'm hoping that they didn't remove these little caps from his body, but chances are they probably did. So if anything happens to his digits, boy, he's gonna be mad. Coming in at number seven, we have the woven gloves. Experts believe that this next piece is one of the few items that was actually used by King Tut while he was alive. International Egyptologist Tarek El Awadi said, and I quote, most of the objects found in the tomb are ceremonial or designed to be used by the Pharaoh in the afterlife. But he believes that these gloves were probably worn by King Tut, either during the winter time or when he was riding his royal chariot. That's pretty cool. I mean, the gloves don't look too stylish, but I think all of these ancient artifacts are so amazing. Moving on to number six, we have the canopic jars. As part of their burial process, Egyptians would place the internal organs of the dead into four jars before mummification. One jar had King Tut's lungs, another had his stomach, another had his intestines, and one was for his liver. And apparently I say intestines wrong. That's how it is in Canada. Sorry. <laughs> the jars were found inside of an alabaster chest. It was thought that King Tut needed these organs in the afterlife, which is why they were preserved. Preserved. Not only that, but four goddesses protected them. But now these jars have been moved to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, but his body is still in its original resting place. Great, so King Tut's body and his internal organs are kept separate. Bet he loves that. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the walking sticks. Among the countless artifacts Tut was buried with, a more interesting one would be his walking sticks. But he wasn't just buried with one walking stick. No, he was buried with 130 walking sticks. Why he needed that many is beyond me. So what we do know is that King Tut had a deformed left leg. People theorize that he had a rare bone disorder called Kohler's disease, and that's what caused this deformity. So it may just be that he needed a walking stick to get around. In fact, in tons of depictions, he was drawn with this walking stick. Some think that it was just a royal staff. But with the newfound evidence of his foot, it's more likely that he needed them for mobility. And chances are, they're cursed. And they have been separated from King Tut's body, meaning he's stuck in the afterlife 
probably hobbling around since we took away his sticks. Like, come on, people, stop angering the king. Coming in at number four, we have Anubis. Guarding the entrance of King Tut's tomb was a statue of a black jackal on top of a podium. This jackal is known as Anubis, the god of the afterlife. Anubis is said to protect the dead, guarding their spirits from trespassers. The jackal was three feet long, made of wood and plaster. This was then painted black, which is the symbolic color of Anubis. Black was chosen since it represents death and decay, but it also symbolizes the fertile soil of the Nile and regeneration. It's crazy how much detail was put into these things. So Anubis was placed outside of King Tut's tomb as kind of a no trespassing sign. But we trespass, so now it's cursed. I mean, it's said that Anubis punishes the mortals who ignore its warning and disturb the dead. In our third spot, we have Tut's Burial Mask. Tut's Burial Mask, otherwise known as a Death Mask, was found in King Tut's coffin resting directly on the shoulders of his mummy. Okay, with a name like Death Mask, gotta be cursed. So these masks were made to resemble the person that it was placed on. It was done so that the spirits could recognize the body after death and help them to the underworld. The mask was filled with oils which helped with the mummification process. Not only that, but at the back of the mask there was a protective spell inscribed into it. The spell was to protect Tut's limbs as he travels to the underworld. Now, according to rumors, Tut's beard on the mask was accidentally snapped off and then glued back on. So not only did they remove a protective mask from King Tut, but they broke it too. Yeah, King Tut is probably really upset about that. Let's hope this didn't interfere with him getting into the underworld. Coming in at number two, we have King Tut. So obviously one of the biggest discoveries in King Tut's tomb was King Tut himself. He was buried in a coffin, placed inside another coffin, inside another coffin, inside another coffin. There were eight coffins in total. So like I mentioned before, anyone that handles King Tut's body or his artifacts are said to be cursed. After Tut's body was found, he was sent to a radiologist to get x-rayed. The radiologist's name was Sir Archibald Douglas Reed. The next day, after conducting the x-ray, Reed fell sick. He died three days later. His death is blamed on King Tut's curse. And in our number one spot, we have the Cobra Staff. So this is where it gets interesting. Rumor has it that the reason why several men mysteriously died after the expedition was because one of the workers stole King Tut's Cobra Staff. Howard Carter claimed that when they found the tomb, it was already robbed. But he may have said that to cover up the fact that him and his team took a couple of artifacts as souvenirs, particularly the Cobra Staff. Ironically enough, one of Carter's team members, James Henry Breasted, returned home to find his pet canary eaten by a cobra. And the cobra was still occupying the cage. Hmm. A cobra staff goes missing, and a cobra is found in his home. Coincidence? I think not. At number 10, we have the Sintamani Stone. This is like a genie lamp, but way better. There are no limits to the amount of wishes you can pull out of this thing. The Sintamani Stone is said to be an artifact of great power that will grant wishes to the person who holds it. The original owner and wielder of this power was the Buddha, which in a way is a perfect match because you know he's not going to do anything evil with it, but it also seems like kind of a waste. Like a dude who has no need for material possessions has the power to wish for anything? Like, what are you going to ask for, dude? The stone has been depicted through many Southeast Asian cultures, like Hinduism, and some people think that the stone could be the equivalent to the Philosopher's Stone, the giving the owner health and potentially immortal life. Now I understand why Indiana Jones is always digging around for these things. This sounds like it would be a pretty good time. At number nine, we have Ark of the Covenant, a big old box that has some of the most sacred religious texts hidden inside them. This is considered one of the biggest lost artifacts in human history. The Ark of the Covenant is supposed to hold the original tablets of the Ten Commandments. The Word of God is chiseled into the stone about how you should live your life, and there's some pretty good rules on them, like don't covet your neighbor's ox? Dude, if it wasn't for those tablets, I would be stealing oxes left, right, and center. I would be known as the North American ox thief, and I would have a stockpile of oxes that would take the world by storm. But thanks to the Babylonians conquering Jerusalem, the ark was lost, and we have no idea where those texts are now. What would happen if we found them? Well, if we continue to follow the Indiana Jones rules, it would be something like this. Heads just exploding all over the place. 
At number eight, we have the seven league boots. If you really went digging around in these old artifacts, you could pull up some pretty cool stuff and become a superhero that has all these trinkets all over them. You would look stylish and you could save the day and that's the best way to do it. Looking good while you're saving the day. Oh my God, great. The seven league boots would be such a hot look that Nike would come up with their own version. The seven league boots are supposed to give the person wearing them the ability to travel seven leagues in a single step. That's good, but nobody knows how long seven leagues is. Are you kidding me? I am actually just kidding you guys. It's like five kilometers. This is a very good power. You could travel on such a small budget. You wouldn't have to worry about buying plane tickets. You could just run as far as you want and end up in a new country and then maybe like put something in the bottom so you could step on water so you could like run across the ocean and go to Europe. That would be great. Or come over here, however you want to do it. At number seven, we have the Staff of the Monkey King. If you have never read the book Journey to the West, then you need to get on that now. It is the foundation of most modern storytelling. Dragon Ball took so much from this book that's hard not to see the direct comparison. The book takes from ancient Chinese tales and one of the main characters is the Monkey King. He has a magical staff that has the ability to stretch great distance or even shrink down to the size of a pin. That's a great weapon for whooping someone from a distance. It could stretch out and slap them in the face and then shrink down and be like, hey, I don't even, that wasn't even me. I didn't even do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. At number six, we have the Helm of Invisibility. Greek mythology has a ton of magical artifacts that have been lost to man. Maybe some of them never existed or maybe some of them were destroyed or maybe some of them are in a giant vault underneath the White House and every president gets to just have fun with them and put them on. That would be so unfair. Well, the Helm of Invisibility is one of the main weapons in the arsenal of the great hero Perseus. He was the dude sent on one of the original fetch quests. One of the items he needed was the head of the Gorgon Queen Medusa. But anyone who looks at her gets turned to stone. So Perseus put on the Helm of Invisibility so he could get close enough to her to cut her head off and guess what? It worked. So this thing doesn't only let you turn invisible, but it also withstands the horrible gaze of a bloodthirsty Gorgon. This is a two for one. At number five, we have Excalibur. The sword and the stone that is one of the most powerful weapons known to man. Well, and it's time when people we're writing about this magical weapon like, like this is before nukes like I, I don't know if the sword can beat a nuke I don't know but it said that the person who has this sword is the true king of England and part of the royal bloodline in some depictions, the sword has some sort of magical powers. There have been all sorts of powers attached to this blade, but some of the more popular abilities is the ability to cut through any stone in a single swipe. The power to kill anything, and I mean anything, like it could be a magical creature, supernatural creature, cosmic, you could kill anything with the sword. In theory, the blade could cut through Cthulhu. That's pretty nuts. But one of the most important abilities is the person wielding the sword can recover from any wounds. We are building a very powerful arsenal of magical weapons on this list. And number four, we have the Club of Dagda. This is the weapon of a god that could bring almost any change he wanted. Dagda is a Celtic god and he was the representation of male strength and he had control of almost every aspect of life. He could kill anything he wanted and then bring it back to life. He could control time, weather, and even bring great famine or plentiful harvest. This dude would give Thor a run for his money. A fight between these two would be a pay per view I would definitely pay for. I wouldn't just steal from a streaming site, like I'd actually give them my money. This club is said to be the item that holds the key to life and death. With the blunt, and sending people to the grave, but then the handle being able to resurrect them. At number three, we have the Cup of Jamshid. Pulled from Persian mythology, it's said that the potion that lays inside this cup brings the person who drinks it immortality. Some people believe that the most successful conquests of the Persian Empire came from someone who had this cup in their possession in secret. And the cup wouldn't only give you the ability to live forever, but also anyone who looked into it would see through all space. You could see all over the world and through the seven heavens. You would get true sight and you could also live forever. You would become the smartest person who has ever lived. At number two, we have the book of Thoth. The ancient Egyptians had a rich mythology that we don't often see represented in film and television, but throughout it there were some godly weapons. The book of Thoth was written by the god of knowledge himself. He gave the book to humanity in a way to enrich their lives. It would teach the reader how to communicate with anything. They would be able to talk to animals, insects, humans, and even the gods themselves. But it is a human way to misuse things, so Thoth put a curse on the book. Prince Neferkapta was in possession of the book, but it cursed him and all of his closest family members to die. Later, he was buried with this treasure. At number one, we have the Spear of Destiny. Now, one of the most powerful weapons in the Bible, and if the stories are true, it would make sense that this thing is supercharged with godly abilities. The Spear of Destiny is said to be the spear that sent Jesus to the grave. If you kill the Son of God, there are going to be some ripple effects. Some of Jesus' godly power leaked onto the spear. This supercharged it, and it gave the person holding it the ability to move the world in any direction they see fit. There are rumors throughout history that great rulers were in possession of this spear. 
years. Some say Genghis Khan had it in his conquest and that's how he was able to take over so much of the world. Other people believe that Hitler found the spear right before he launched his attacks on Europe. The idea of Hitler having the spear does hold a little bit of water because he was someone who was very interested in magical artifacts. He would send out task force in search of some of the world's lost mythical items to give him power and maybe it was the spear that gave him guidance to take over a lot of Europe. Starting off this countdown we have King Tut's dagger. Upon excavating the tomb of King Tut in 1925, scientists discovered a long 34 centimeter dagger wrapped up with King Tut. Now back then there was no way for them to do studies on the dagger without damaging it. However, an x-ray done in 1970 showed that the dagger was made of some interesting compounds, primarily nickel and iron. Back then, iron was considered very rare. And how could it have been composed of iron when his burial predated Egypt's Iron Age by nearly 2,000 years? So right there, that's a little shocking. As a result of the iron and nickel composition, scientists have declared it was made from extraterrestrial metal. Now there are two theories here. One is that a meteorite crashed down and then they used that to make the dagger. Theory two is that the dagger was made by aliens and dropped or left by them accidentally. I mean, some honestly do think that the ancient Egyptians were in contact with aliens. If that's the case, then the dagger might have originally been from the ETs. Coming in number nine, we have the Dropa Stones. The Dropa Stones are maybe the wildest discovery when it comes to artifacts from space. These are basically CDs from 10,000 years ago that have a whole story on them that talk about aliens crash landing on Earth and then giving some tools to humans. Okay, let me backtrack a little bit. These stones were found in a cave in China. At first glance, they seem to have hieroglyphs all over them and almost like they were created for a phonograph. When deciphered, there was a whole story of aliens coming to Earth that were named the Dropa. They crashed on Earth, met humans in the area, gave them tech, fixed their ship, and then bounced. When you play these Dropa discs, they hum and vibrate like they're creating some sort of energy. And that is where all the research stops. On the record, these things were just put away and no one ever looked at them again. But you and I both know that is a bunch of horse poop. These were obviously taken somewhere to be researched behind a watchful eye. Coming in at number eight, we have the US Delta II rocket. Back in January of 1997, a woman named Lottie Williams was out minding her own business on a nice little walk. To her surprise, she was greeted by a streak of light in the sky. And all of a sudden, she felt something brush her shoulder. Turns out that this thing that brushed her was part of a US Delta II rocket. The rocket was launched in 1996. A year later, it came crashing down in pieces. Lottie said when she felt something brush by, she turned around and saw something on the ground. It was a small piece of burnt mesh. Now she is extremely lucky because had it been a bigger piece, it probably would have knocked her down and killed her. Here's the thing, analysis shows that it's most likely part of the Delta II rocket. Most likely, still not 100% confirmed. For all we know, that could be a piece from an alien spacecraft. Coming in number seven, we have the pyramids. Here's the thing, do I actually think that pyramids came from space? Do I think that aliens came down from space and came to humans and were like, dudes, we're aliens, we're from the future, we got tech, it's so cool, it's gonna blow your socks off and we're gonna make a civilization so sick with some big triangles that come out of the ground and you can put your coolest dead bodies in them. No, I don't think that. I think that the pyramids were made with an insane amount of manpower because back then life was cheaper than it is now and you could just have an army of slaves move rocks until they physically couldn't and then could just bring in a new army. That's how I think they did it. Also no one had a phone back then so you couldn't even get distracted while you were on the job. What are you gonna try and do? Build a sandcastle? That would have been impossible because there was literally no water around. But that being said there are a lot of people who think that the pyramids could have been built by some alien coming down to earth and giving humans the tools to build these monuments with the precision of having them pointing at north, east, south, and west with some people thinking that they are power plants that could create electricity. I think most of the people who think that have never been to Egypt, but you know it's good to make those assumptions after watching 30 minutes worth of YouTube videos. Moving on to number six, we have the Russian tank. In March of 2011, a man was out hiking in northwestern Colorado when he came across something strange. The object was round and warm to touch. It was also in a crater, meaning whatever this was had just crashed down from space. The hiker then called military aerospace officials. 
Later, it was revealed that this weird object was the tank from a Russian Zenit 3 rocket. The rocket was launched in January. Two months later, it came crashing back down. Fun fact, it's one of only a handful of space debris to be found in the US. But seriously, imagine being out for a walk and seeing something fly towards you from the sky. Like damn, that's another thing to worry about, being killed by space debris. Coming in at number 5 we have the Roman Decahedron. Some sort of 3D octagon and no one knows what they do. Like zero people have been able to figure out what these things were for and one of the weirdest parts about them is that we have found a lot of them. They seem to all come from the Roman era and were moved out to every territory that the Romans controlled. There are over 100 of these strange devices that have been found and there are several guesses as to what they could do. Some people think they could have been some sort of status symbol. To have one in your home would have meant you were rich and in good grace with the Emperor of Rome. They might have just been decoration or they could have been some sort of communication device from space and it's how the Romans were able to be so powerful. In our fourth spot we have the Roswell Rock. This rock is a very weird rock with a detailed design. The rock is uniform in color, unusually smooth and has a design protruding from the surface of it. This rock was found in Roswell, New Mexico in 2004 by a man named Robert Ridge. He was a deer hunter. Apparently he found this rock half sticking out of the ground and was shocked by its unusual and perfect design, as well as its strange magnetic properties. Upon analyzing it, people have realized that the rock's design actually matches a crop circle that was found in England in 1996, which makes this whole thing that much weirder. Now, some are convinced that this rock is some message sent by aliens. After experts have analyzed the design, they notice that it's a pattern of a sun and a moon inside of a circle. A woman named Linda Moulton Howe, who's an investigative journalist, believes that aliens are trying to teach us about astronomy with this rock, or that the rock contains a date for some event that has or will happen. It's pretty spooky. I just wish we knew more about this weird rock. Coming in number three, we have fungus. When you look at all the living beings on this planet, why has fungus got its own spot? I mean, those things are just plants, right? Wrong. Fungus are some of the most advanced life forms on the planet. They have functionality that spreads in extreme diversity from species to species. Some of them have the ability to mind control a host and then kill it so it spreads spores. Others have advanced communication techniques that allow them to find the most direct routes to one another. Because of this, there's speculation that fungus might have come here by a aliens or might have touched down on Earth via meteor. In at number 2 we have the Betts Mystery Sphere. On March 27, 1974, the Betts family were out examining a small bushfire near their property. While doing so, the family came across a completely smooth metal sphere. It was about the size of a bowling ball. On this sphere there was a triangle engraved in it. They took it home only to find that it had strange properties. One day when their son was playing his guitar in the same room as this sphere, it started to emit a throbbing sound from it. The sound was strong enough to hurt the family's dog's ears. This sphere can also change directions, so if you push it across the floor, it will roll forward and then stop and then roll back all on its own. It's also said to be able to absorb power from solar energy. It's said to be more active when exposed to the sun. Now they refuse to let any Anyone analyze it until they link the sphere to paranormal activity that was happening around the house. Like doors would slam by themselves and they would hear this weird organ music. Now scientists have analyzed it and they said it was just a normal sphere. How late? But the family is convinced that something is controlling it. Maybe something of the extraterrestrial nature. Seriously, where did this sphere come from and what's the deal with its weird properties? Seems like it came from space. And coming at the number one spot we have alien coins. So who do we always see plastered on coins? Well it's our most rich and famous people, the ones that define our culture at the time or the rulers that control the area and if you don't put their face on the money they will for sure cut your head off. Well then there's a bunch of questions as to why some alien coins were found in Egypt. There was a massive renovation done on some homes in Egypt which dug up one of the strangest artifacts to date. They were a series of coins that were found that had not a queen's head on them or a pharaoh but an alien dude. Like the one that looks like he's pulled right out of the movies. Like the green dude with the big head and the green skin you know all that stuff going on. You guys know what I'm talking about. But this dude had like a toga on so he kind of looked a little bit boss. There were also several coins that were found that seemed to have spaceships on them. If the ruler theory is right there could have been an alien ruler who came down from the stars in ancient Egypt. Someone who maybe 
baby crash landed and needed to get his ship fixed and while he was waiting for his repairs to be done he was worshipped like a god. Starting off number 10 now we have The Dark. This one was posted to reddit by Ace Flores X who said they found what you're about to see in the attic of their vacation home. Here it is, a polaroid picture of darkness with the question do you see him written underneath. What? How creepy is that? Why is it all scratched up as well? It looks like they just kept scratching away at the darkness or perhaps the person they could see. Maybe they went mad because nobody else could see the person in the picture. To be honest, I don't want to see anybody in that picture. I'm really hoping it isn't one of those things where someone will appear if you stare long enough. Perhaps it's time to move on. Moving on now to number 9 we have Voodoo. This one was posted to the No Sleep subreddit. The person who posted it has since deleted their account. Suspicious, but this is what they said. Ok, so I was clearing out my family members attic in their very old home. I find this wedged inside the wall. It looks obviously handmade and its eyes and mouth are the creepiest. It also has a small pin needle sticking into its back. I can't make out any writing or tags on the doll but it does have a small wooden stand underneath with some odd engravings. The hair also appears to be real. Check these pictures out. What do you think? Ah, what is that? What is it? Is that real hair for its beard? I don't even want to know. I think it's a voodoo doll, right? It's got to be. It looks quite realistic and it has a pin coming out of its back. I don't know very much about voodoo, but I do know if there's a pin sticking out of a doll's back, maybe run a mile. Moving on to number 8 now, we have The Murder. This one comes from Reddit user Gobo in Outer Space. They said, while clearing out an attic space, I found some 30 plus year old letters written to my dad from his mother. She had died 20 years or so before. I read the letters and realised they were written to him while he was in prison. I asked my mom about the letters and she admitted to me that my dad had been in prison for murder. My dad still doesn't know I know. Ok, talk about family secrets there. How would you guys feel if you found out that one of your parents was a convicted murderer? That's a lot to deal with. Would you confront them about it? Or would you just try and forget and carry on like nothing happened? It's going to be pretty intense either way. Coming in at number 7 now we have Backbone. This one comes from reddit user Haplessru. They said a girl I know went into the basement of the old house that she was renting and found a spine in the ceiling. It was an unfinished ceiling. She she called the landlord and he quickly said it was a dog spine, took it and left. Later she went to check out a noise in the attic and when she opened the attic door a ton of crayons showered down on top of her. Ok, so let's ignore the crayons bit for now, I think that's kind of beside the point. Let's focus on the spine in the attic. Who is the first person you would call if you found a spine in the attic of a house you were renting? I think most people would say the police, you'd be very suspicious of your landlord. Instead, this person calls the landlord who swings by to collect it and tells them it's a dog spine before quickly leaving. Ok, and you're just going to take their word for it are you? It might just be a dog spine, that's fair, that's still quite weird though. But if it's not, they may have just helped a murderer get away with a murder and it might be their spine next. I don't know, just my theory. Next up number 6 now we have the attic. Yes, this one is called the attic because it's not really what they found in the attic that's scary, it's the attic itself. It was posted to reddit by user Nukestorm. They said there's a f***ed up room in the attic where I just moved into, pretty sure nothing good happened there. Well, as you can see from the first few pictures, it looks normal at first but soon we enter a room. The room looks like a cell for containing a person, keeping them captive. There was a small cot, a shelf and a tiny window and that was it. The door had a metal grate on the inside and outside of it and the ceiling was a little over 4 feet. What do you think that room was used for? It can get quite concerning if you let your imagination run away with you there. Moving on to number 5 now we have Baby. In 2012 reddit user Soul Biscuits made a post called Mysterious Picture of a Creepy Baby We Found in Our Attic. Here's the picture, yes I think I can confirm that is creepy, creepy confirmed. Another redditor called And Every Breath posted some helpful context to the picture. He said it was from the Victorian era and added that back then a child gets very sick and it's obvious that she or he will die shortly. Before calling friends and family or funeral directors, the family would rush to find a photographer. Sometimes the child would be photographed alive and extremely ill. These are disturbing but mostly sad. That being said, the photographer didn't always get there in time and thus we have pictures of dead children. 
Well, I hoped an explanation would make me feel better about that picture, but I think it makes it a little bit more disturbing if I'm honest. Next up number 4 now, we have One Eye Shut. This one comes from The General123. They said, I'm a contractor. Went on a walkthrough of an estate sale property with a customer and his real estate agent to inspect the house and plan renovations. I climbed into the attic and came face to face with a giant glass eye doll. You know the ones when you lay them back, the eyes close. Damn thing was 4 feet tall, laying on its side and right in my face, with one eye open and one half freaking shut. I was a little weirded out. I told the customer to take a look. He climbed up and was a little freaked out. The real estate agent climbed up and jumped back down screaming. I still chuckle over that one. Well, I'm glad they can chuckle because that sounds more than a little bit scary. A four foot doll is massive. I think just seeing that in the dark alone would have scared me, but the eyes. Yeah, that would have sent me scuttling back down the attic ladder. Both eyes shut is fine, both eyes open is scary, but one of each, that's pretty terrifying. Don't wink at me, big creepy doll. Close your eyes. Moving on to number three, we have Monkey Business. This one was posted to the creepy subreddit by Mostly Grapes. It doesn't need much of an introduction. Let's take a look at the picture. Wow, look at the teeth. Look at the eyes, look at the weird bit of monkey skull coming through the top of its exposed head, look at the creepy nail polished fingers, look at the dislocated monkey paws, it's just pure horror, classic horror. I don't even know what to add other than to tell you guys that the top comment simply says, if it starts clapping, someone is gonna die. And I think that's a fair assessment. My gut reaction when I saw this is that it should be destroyed, but if it's cursed, I think the curse would just get passed on to you. I think that's why this monkey continues to be allowed to exist. Moving on now to number two, we have the uncle. This one comes from 40 year old Creeper, that's their username. They said, I lived in a beautiful Victoria house that was so spooky. It had been in my boyfriend's family for many generations. In the attic was tons of clothes from his grandparents, just all boxed up and untouched for a long time. I guess the grandpa fell over and died in the living room, and then a few days later the grandma died in the dining room, both of unknown causes. I found a handwritten journal in the attic, which was all stories of his uncle's adventures. His uncle would explore and chart jungles. There was an entry where he found dead cut up bodies of a tribe he thought might be hunting and eating another tribe. When I found a photo of the uncle I was so freaked out, he looked exactly like my boyfriend. They named him after his uncle as well, he always hated that. The family didn't like to talk about the uncle. He went missing in the jungle and they never found a body. We also found an old Victorian photo album of his relatives. If you've ever seen them, they're so spooky. Some of the photos photos have babies in them that were perfectly crisp and their eyes look glazed over. Since then I learned that it was most likely because the babies were dead when the photos were taken. That house always freaked me out. When I first read this I thought the whole cannibalistic tribe thing was going to be the creepy part of this story and then it just throws in dead babies in the end right there. That will always raise a scary story by at least one point. And finally number one now we have Separation. This is a short but horrifying one from Colon Rody on Reddit. They're a realtor who said one day they did a property inspection and in their words it turned up a dead body in the attic. It was a suicide. Someone hung themselves. Homeowner thought her husband had left her years ago. I guess he did. Yeah, I mean, I guess he did. That's horrifying though. It's one of those things where you think, how did she not know? Would you guys know if there was a dead body in your attic? I don't want to go into the grisly details about how you'd know, but surely you'd know, right? Or maybe it's not as easy to detect these kind of things. Perhaps there are a lot of dead bodies sitting in attics that we don't even know about. As a thought. Coming in number 10, we have the Antikythera mechanism. Mapping out the stars is something that many civilizations have done throughout history. I mean, it's pretty hard not to be blown away by what is floating around above you in this massive net of lights and endless void of blackness, but it was more than this. The stars could be used to map out directions so you could know where you're going in the dead of night when the sun wasn't being kind enough to show you which direction you needed to head in. The Antikythera mechanism was maybe the most advanced form of mapping out the stars we have ever seen from ancient civilizations. There's a series of gears and systems almost like a massive clock. It has two signs that were most likely used for mapping out different things. But the wild thing about this archaeological find is that to this day, we don't know exactly what it was used for. The thing is just too complex. I wonder what type of thing that we have today that no one will be able to find out what it was used for in the future. Is it gonna be Heelys or something? Like, why did they want wheels on their shoes? Was it for speed? Was it for fashion? Turns out it's for both, baby. Gotta go fast, gotta look good. If that isn't a slow 
Logan already? It should be. Coming in at number nine, we have the Piri's Res map. I think one of the coolest and worst jobs you could have had back in the day would have been an explorer. I mean, you could go and find a new land and literally become famous because of your discoveries. You could get knighted and everyone in the world would want to hear his stories about traveling across the globe to see some of the most exotic things the world has to offer. But at the same time, you would have to spend months at a time on a boat with only dudes. And then you might end up in a place that is so insanely cold, you lose some of your fingers and toes. Or you could be in a jungly area that has a tiger that is trying to kill you and you have literally never seen a tiger before in your life. But for Piri Rez, things seemed to work out all right. The dude was from Hungary and it seemed that he had such a great understanding of the world that people thought he could have come from the future. The dude had a map that broke down the location of Antarctica 200 years before it was officially discovered and disclosed to the world. This means that this man had a better understanding of the world than anyone around him. There's also the fact that he mapped out missing continents that have disappeared. I would love a new continent. I really just want a new culture of people so I can try a new food that I didn't even know existed. It's the main reason I want aliens to be real so they can come here and give me food. Coming in at number eight, we have the Hindu bell. Answer this question. How did an old brass bell that looks like it has some carvings in it that look like a Hindu god end up in a mine in West Virginia encased in a lump of coal that was 300 million years old? Huh? How? You tell me how. I don't know. I don't know how. Was it because the future people came back to leave a bell for some other people? Did some people cross the Atlantic way before we think? Or was the whole thing a hoax? Well, I don't know, dude. Let me know in the comments what you think. Coming at number seven, we have the Dendera lights. There might have been light bulbs that were discovered in ancient Egypt. Yeah, everyone likes to jump on the bad wagon of Thomas Edison when we talk about the person who brought light to homes. But he really was just a con man who had an eye for a good patent and killed a prince in one of the most brutal executions ever because his ego was too big to let Nikola Tesla have the better version of technology. But when we start to flow back through time, we find that the Egyptians used to worship something called the Dendera lights. It would seem that hieroglyphs in the Hafar temple would show that the Egyptians used to be able to harness the power of glowing lights and they might have used it to party. How could they have done something like this? Well, no one knows and the marking might have just been art, but it could have been tech that was brought to them from the future. It might have been alien tech since ancient Egyptians are always associated with aliens. Coming in at number six, we have the underwater pyramid. There has been so much footage of strange things flying around in the air that it shocks me that we haven't been introduced to even one alien yet. Honestly, I hope that it happens in my lifetime because this pandemic has just been such a drag. We need something to spice things up, but maybe we haven't been able to run into any space dudes because they have all been underwater. There are some people who think that all the aliens who come to visit come to a secret underwater base and that's why we don't see them. And this pyramid that was found in Yonaguni, Japan might be hints to this. Now at first glance the people who came to look at it said that it's just a normal rock formation, nothing special about it. But then some people said that they found a massive knife down there. And then some other people said that knife was a fake and had nothing to do with a massive underwater pyramid. Then some people stated that there was art carved into the side of this pyramid, which hasn't been disproven yet. Okay, but it still could be. There are theories floating around that this could be connected to Atlantis or that it could be a hotspot for alien visitors who brought some tech from the future to make a home base just outside of Japan. Coming in at number five, we have the Nazca Lines. Oh, don't think that we're off the idea of aliens coming to Earth just yet. I mean, we're doing a list of artifacts from the future. There's gonna be a lot of alien talk on this one. The Nazca Lines might be one of the oldest and strangest discoveries in the area. They went unnoticed for thousands of years until the 1930s. This is mainly because you can only see them from the sky. They are massive lines that are seen running through the ground. They are made in a pretty primitive way by just moving the earth, which is traditionally red to showcase the white earth underneath. Now that doesn't seem like it came from the future at all. Well, this is where the future thing comes in. These lines were made over 2,000 years ago, and the question is, why did they make them? Some 
people think that this could have been a way to communicate with aliens or beings from the future. Other people think that this could have just been rituals to send a message to a god in order to have a good year of crops. Mind you, those gods might have been aliens from the future. Next on the list, we have the Archilocori axe. I mean, this is really just an axe. What's so special about it? I could go buy an axe right now and it would do the same thing that it did thousands of years ago. It would chop. Well, unless you have a TikTok that's dedicated to chopping wood, then the axe is used to chop wood and rev a woman's libido. But what has put this axe on this list is the fact that it was made over 4,000 years ago and has a ton of strange markings in it all over it and no one has been able to decipher them. There are 15 different symbols on it, which is very strange for this kind of tool. It would have just been used to chop wood. Why did someone put so much work into making it look nice? There's also the fact that the axe is very advanced for its era. Maybe the person who made it had knowledge from the future, or maybe they were just the best axe maker of their time and decided to deck out their axe with a bunch of cool drawings. Like, you know, if you're making a table for yourself today, you're gonna make the thing custom and cool as hell. Next, we have the Lunar Tact Disc. How did the Vikings become one of the most dominant warriors of their time? Was it weaponry? Was it the lack of empathy? Was it the way they would dress? Well, it might have been all of those things combined with the Lunar Tact Disc. This thing was basically the most advanced compass of its day. The thing could tell the Vikings how to cross vast oceans, which was a key part in how they were able to be such a dominant force. They would be able to venture way far away from their homes and then pull up on some people and just start hacking and slashing. They could cut everyone's head off and really go to town on the whole area. They would take some prisoners, they would burn things to the ground. You didn't want to be on the receiving end of a Viking axe. But the way they were able to make these long ocean voyages without the fear of getting lost was through the lunar tack disc. This thing was the most advanced compass of its day and it could even work at night. This thing was able to somehow cast light onto the compass that would be similar to using a sundial during the day. Apparently it used magic crystals. These crystals might have come from the future. We have no idea really how they worked because we've never found one. Next on the list, we have the Baghdad battery. When was the first battery ever made? When did we figure out how to lock down the power of electricity and put it into a little area so that it could be used for Xbox controllers? Do those things still take batteries or do they have rechargeable batteries now? For how long have we been seeing people control the power of lightning in a Duracell? Well, it turns out that we might have been able to do this for longer than you think. The Baghdad battery was discovered back in 1938 and trust me, it was turning some heads. It had a copper rod inside of it and what some people are saying is electroplating. If this is true, that means that people back then were able to harness some juice into a clay pot. If this is possible, that means I could set up some clay pots in my home and charge my phone like that. I could get off the grid with a little bit of clay and copper. I like the sound of that. All right, next to the list, guys, we have the London Hammer. Okay, this is for sure the craziest one. Mind you, I know nothing about geology, so this might be normal, but the internet seems to think that this is a big deal, and who am I to deny them? The London Hammer seems to be a regular relic, some old hammer that a blacksmith probably used to make some tools and weapons. I mean, there is really nothing cool about that, and it definitely didn't come from the future, but then you find out that the hammer was found in some limestone that is 400 million years old. What does that mean? I don't really know. Does limestone that old just hang around and anything can get stuck in it? Or is it something that can only happen if the hammer got launched into it at the time? I have no clue, man, but some people seem to think that something spectacular happened here because people are constantly talking about how this is completely unexplained. Mm -hmm.